Startup funding is a nearly universal issue for new product entrepreneurs. Your invention may be amazing, but it's not gonna earn you a dime until you can actually get it engineered, prototyped, launched into production, marketed, and sold. And those steps aren't always cheap. Hi, I'm Dan Enger, and today we're gonna to talk about how to get seed funding for your physical product startup. I speak with entrepreneurs almost every single day who are stuck because they can't afford to move their projects forward. And this is a really stupid reason for your dreams to die because there's a hell of a lot of money out there waiting to fuel your new idea. Let me show you a couple examples. This goofy board game, yes, board game called Exploding Kittens raised over $8 million on Kickstarter. This travel tripod raised over $12 million on Kickstarter. Think that's a lot? Okay, get ready to pick your jaw up off the floor. The Juicero raised over $100 million from private investors. Mind you, this product completely imploded the moment that people realized that its core function, squeezing juice bags, could be done by hand. Yeah, there's plenty of money around to fund the engineering and development of high quality products that people actually want. The question is how to get that money and what method of fundraising is right for your product and your situation. So here we go, Seed Funding 101 for Physical Product Startups. This is your product. Right now, it's just an idea, but it takes money to make money. So you're looking for ways to raise capital to develop that idea into a tangible prototype and ultimately a wildly selling product that generates massive greenery. What you need is some seed funding, which is a fancy term for pre-revenue money. Seed funding generally goes towards big ticket items like design and engineering, mass production tooling costs, and marketing, among other things. You can get seed money from a lot of different sources, so let's introduce them one by one from a basic high level. The first source is your own money, which you may have more of than you think. Aside from your bank account, you can also tap into things like the equity you have in your own home via a home equity line of credit, or even your retirement savings. You've probably been quietly dumping money onto these piles for a long time without even realizing it. And the main benefit to using your own money, AKA bootstrapping, is that you maintain complete and total ownership and control of your project. No investors to answer to except for yourself and maybe your wife. John, I want a divorce. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not too keen on tapping into these two sacred reserves of money because you could really screw yourself if your project doesn't pay off in the end. I want a divorce, divorce, divorce. In any case, you really should put some of your own money into your project, at least in the beginning. It's just a lot faster and easier than relying on other people, assuming you can do so without raiding your mortgage or retirement. So hopefully you've got at least five or 10K of extra money in the bank to get the ball rolling. Another reason to start out with a little bootstrapping is because no angel investor is gonna take you seriously if you don't have your own skin in the game. Speaking of angel investors, let's talk about private equity. Private equity funding is when you sell partial ownership of your company in exchange for money, with the buyers expecting to make a big return on their investment once you start making those filthy profits. This concept is similar to the idea of stocks on the stock market, except your shares are private, i.e. you aren't allowing the public to buy into your company. Save that for when you're already generating millions in revenue. Private investors can come in many forms. You often hear about angel investors, which is really just a fancy term for a rich person looking to make a high impact investment. Then there are venture capitalists who are professional investors who normally don't get involved until you're already profitable or nearly profitable. Technically though, that's not seed money, so we aren't gonna focus on venture capital right now. Friends and family are another popular choice for equity seed funding too, because they know you and hopefully trust you. Another creative way to utilize private equity is through saving money rather than raising money. And that is by offering equity in your company rather than payment in exchange for services that you're buying as a company. Whether those services are provided by outside firms or even by your company's own employees if you decide to bring on staff. One major benefit of going the private equity route is that if poop does hit the fan, you aren't actually on the hook to repay the money. This will, however, piss off your investors immeasurably and you may find a bounty on your head. Next are grants and awards, AKA free money to use towards a goal. Grant and award money doesn't dilute the ownership of your company like private equity sales do. The term grant is most often associated with the nonprofit world, 
but there are grants which are suitable for profit-driven endeavors. These types of grants are most often coming from business incubators and accelerators or the government. Naturally, grants and awards are competitive because after all, who wouldn't want free money? One of the most notable grants is the U.S. government's SBIR and STTR programs, which stand for Small Business Innovation and Research and Small Business Technology Transfer. The National Science Foundation goes so far as to call these programs America's Seed Fund. Now, the government's theory is that these funds exist to support high-risk, high-impact projects that otherwise wouldn't receive private investments due to their risky nature. I don't know about you, but personally, I really hate the government. But the fact is these programs do exist already, so you may as well get some of your stolen tax money back, right? While it can take a lot of time and effort to create and submit your SBIR or STTR application, it could still pay off massively for you, with the Stage 1 SBIR award usually being 150 k and the Stage 2 award usually being $1 million, all money that you don't have to pay back. On the other end of the spectrum, you can get your hands on cash almost instantly with a loan. A loan, of course, is just money that you have to pay back with interest. And there are tons of lenders to choose from, especially online. All you have to do is a quick Google search for online business loan, and you'll immediately have a smorgasbord of instant cash options laid out before you. Be careful though, because you're gonna be on the hook big time. If you can't pay these loans back, the interest rates are gonna eat you alive. And it's for this reason that loans are really not recommended for those riskier earlier stages before your product is earning any revenue. The last thing you need are loan sharks chasing you down. Now that we've got all the scary stuff out of the way, let's talk about everyone's favorite form of funding, crowdfunding. When we think of crowdfunding, probably the first company that comes to mind is Kickstarter, who were one of the original pioneers in the online crowdfunding movement. Indiegogo is a strong competitor. These two platforms specialize in reward-based crowdfunding to be specific. Here's how that works. People who want your product agree to put money down up front for you to use to develop and launch the product, knowing that you aren't done yet and you need funding in order to deliver. In return, you give your backers a reward, which is usually just a big discount when the product is ready. In other words, this is a kind of pre-sale. There are a ton of benefits to reward-based crowdfunding. You don't have to pay the money back if you fail, you don't have to create a business plan or a pitch deck, and your campaign itself is actually a form of market validation, proving whether or not people are actually willing to buy your product. Crowdfunding is a truly revolutionary new way for startups to raise money. Gone are the days when you had to move out to Silicon Valley to start a tech business. Now you can do it literally from the comfort of your own home. There are other forms of crowdfunding too. Equity crowdfunding is like getting a whole bunch of tiny angel investors rather than one or two big ones. And in the US, this type of fundraising was actually only legal for accredited investors until very recently. So this is a pretty new option for entrepreneurs. Online platforms like Seed Invest and Start Engine make this type of fundraising easier than ever for the little guy to connect with big and small investors. Finally, just as the name implies, crowd lending is just lending from many small lenders rather than one big central lender like a bank. Also known as peer-to-peer -peer lending, it's really not that different from traditional lending from the startup's perspective. And again, probably not the best option for seed funding for the reasons we discussed earlier. So there you have it, the main options for hardware startup seed funding. Now we just have to decide which method is right for your project and jump on it. Of course, this video is really just scratching the surface, but my hope is that it gives you a better sense of the big picture and gets you thinking about your options. If you're a serious hardware startup or just a person with an idea, check out my online training course called Product Launch Accelerator. In it, you'll learn everything from idea to product launch and sales, including specific step-by-step -step instructions to actually get the types of funding that we just discussed. If you wanna learn more, check out brainchildengineering.com accelerator. Don't even try to spell that, just click the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.